Welcome back to HackCode. In this video, we we'll solve an essential problem for coding interviews word search from LateCode. This problem is a great way to strengthen your understanding of backtracking and depth search search. It requires us to search for a word in a 2D grid by traversing it cell by cell in all directions. We will explore the DFS approach which is elegant way to explore paths without revisiting cells unnecessarily. This type of problem is asked when interviewers want to assess your analytical and logical problem solving skills rather than testing heavy data structure concepts. So sit back, relax and let's dive in. So what is the problem statement given? Given an M cross N grid of characters, board and a string word written true if word exists in the grid. The word can be constructed from the letters of sequentially adjacent cells where adjacent cells are horizontally or vertically neighboring. The same letter may not be used more than once. So guys, it's very simple, right? So they just give us some board which contains of characters and we should consider only adjacent characters. These adjacent characters can be horizontally or vertically adjacent and we should not use the same character cell again. Okay. So these are the conditions they're given. We just need to check if we can form the word. Okay. So from a given cell, we can explore this direction, this direction. If it is in corner or else like if it is in middle, we can explore this, 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 this. So basically four directions we can explore. Okay. So an example on the given word is A, B, C, C, E, D. So this is our character board. Okay. So now we can easily form right A, B, C, C, E, D. So this is our formed by adjacent cells. Okay. So we run true. And then example two, what is the word we have? S, double E. So for that, we can see that it is formed here. So these are adjacent cells. Okay. So that's why we return true. And in example three, we have the word A, B, C, B. Okay. So if you see here, we have only A, B, C. There is no D. That's why return false because we can't make the given word from the characters we have. So what are the constraints they're given? So M is equals to board length. That means that number of rows and N is equals to board of Y dot length. So basically it's a column length. Okay. So on M and N are in the inclusive range of one to six. So basically these rows and columns are in the inclusive range of one to six and the word length is in the inclusive range of one to 15. Okay. And board and word consists of only lowercase and uppercase English letters. So basically this consists of only lowercase and uppercase English letters. Okay. So let's look into the given ball applet code. We have a method exists which consumes board and word. So this board is what list of list of strings and word is of type string and we return boolean. Okay. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. Firstly, if you're not aware of DFS, DFS is a recursive technique which is used to explore all possible paths in a problem by going as deep as possible along one path before backtracking to explore others. So in this problem, we'll explore four directions up, down, left and right recursively from each cell. Okay. So basically, if you see here, we can explore up, down, right and left. Okay. If the current path doesn't lead to a solution, we backtrack to the previous cell and try the next direction. So basically in this case, from C, we try to explore this path, but this path doesn't form as the ABCC, right? That's why we backtrack and go to C and explore the other possible paths. So that's how we get into the C. So this is what our vertical neighbor, okay? Backtracking ensures we explore all valid paths without unnecessary reputation. Yeah, so basically if we visit the cell once, we mark it as a visited, okay? So next time we don't visit it again. So we'll see that in code, don't worry, but this is just the concept we have, okay? So let's look at this DFS in action here, okay? So basically we starting with cell 00, okay? This is the 0th row, 0th column. And then we found a match for A. So we explore this direction and we get B. So that's what we have. And similarly, we'll explore this direction, we get C. So this is what we have. And then we try to explore this direction, but we don't get C. That's why we come to C again and then that is called backtracking here and then we explore one comma two. So in one comma two, we find C. So it's a match. And then next we try to explore in this direction. Again, we don't find E there. So we backtrack to C and then we explore what two comma two. So two comma two is a match. So again, we try to explore this direction. So this direction doesn't give us D. So that's why we backtrack to E and then this is the out of bounds. So that's why we try to explore this direction. And then we get a D, so it's a match for us. Since like all characters match now, we can just return true since the word is found, okay? So in other cases where there is no match, we return false, okay? 
So let's look at the approach here. So what is the intuition? We just need to determine if the given word can be formed in the 2D grid by moving up, down, left or right. So we just discussed the same thing, right? So that's what I just put it in a sequence of steps here. Okay. So the key idea is to explore all possible paths using DFS. If a path fails to match the word, we backtrack and explore other directions. Backtracking ensures us we avoid revisiting the same cell within the single path. Okay. So let's look into algorithm. So step one, start from each cell of the board. For each cell, perform DFS to explore all possible paths. So DFS is nothing but explore all possible paths here and then backtrack if we don't find the solution. So in step two, in DFS, we check if the current cell matches the corresponding character in the word. So basically, we check if the current cell matches the corresponding character in the word. So we explore the word using the index, right? So we just check if current row column value, that is the cell value, matches the required character in the word. Okay. In step three, Mark the current cell as visited to avoid revisiting it. Continue DFS in all four directions. Okay. So this is the same thing we discussed, right? In step four, if the word is found dead and true, if not, backtrack by unmarking the cell and try other paths. In step five, if the paths are exhausted and word is not found, we return false. Okay. So basically, this is the case where we can't find the word from the given character's board. Okay. So hope you got the idea. Even if you don't get the idea, we'll get this clearly when we go through the code. Okay. So now let's go into code. So firstly, we're getting the number of rows and columns we have using the length of board and length of board of zero. So if you're not aware of this convention, I'll explain you. So basically length of board is what this length of this order list. So actually our board is the list of list of strings, right? So here length of order list gives this length of this list. Like we have three here and how many number of rows we have three rows, right? So basically here each list is a row here. That's why we can directly get the rows length using the length of the board. Okay. And then we are getting the columns using length of board of zero. Why length of board of zero only? Because we know that at least the column is of length one. They mentioned here, right? In the constraints. So here we can see that M1 and N are in the inclusion of one to six. At least there would be one column. So we don't get index out of bound exceptions. That's why we're getting length of board of zero. So basically it is what length of this one. So length of this one is what four. So it is four and how many columns we have four columns. So that's why we can get the columns using length of board of zero. Okay. So here we defined a helper function for doing the DFS. We'll look into that later. Firstly, what is step one? We try to find the word starting from each cell. Okay. So to explore each cell, we require two for loops. It's very standard. Okay. We are just exploring the matrix we have. So that's why we're using the two for loops for row in range of rows and for call in range of columns. So basically this would be generating the indexes in the range of zero to rows minus one. And this would be generating the index in the range of zero to calls minus one. So basically this is the exclusion in it. That's why it would be minus one. Okay. And then we're checking if DFS of row call and zero return true. So what is this function doing? So now let's look into here. Okay. So this is the helper function we define. So here it takes row column and index. So this index is required to check if the current index in the word matches the current cell we're choosing. And this current cell can be retrieved using this row and column we have. Okay. So firstly, we're checking if the entire word is matched. So if the entire word is matched, how can we get that? So basically, if the index is equals to length of the word, then it means that entire word is matched, right? So we are done with the word. So that's why we return true. Okay. This is a base case we have guys. And then step three, we check the bounds and if the cell matches the words character. So how can we check the bounds? So basically our row should be in the inclusion range of zero to rows minus one, right? That is the wired index range for rows. So that's why we check if it is less than zero or if it is greater than or equal to rows, we return false. And then we also check if C less than zero or C greater than or equal to calls. This is a check for the columns. And then what is the check we have here? Board of R C not equal to word of index. So basically this is checking if the current character is not a match for a given words character. In that case also we return false because it is a character mismatch and out of the bounds. That's why we have to return false. These two are the base cases we have. And then actual processing happens. So we temporarily mark the cell as visited so that we don't consider this cell again. So they mentioned in the question, right? We should not consider the same cell again for the given path. So here they mentioned, right? Same letter cell may not be used more than once. For that reason, we just temporarily mark it as hashtag so that we don't explore it again. When I say we don't explore it again, basically when we revisit this word again, it would be hashtag so that it would not be matched for a given words character. So here they mentioned, right? The board and word consists of only lowercase and uppercase English letters. So if this contains a hashtag, then that means that it won't be a match for our given word. So we return false. So in that case, we're not considering it again. So that's how we're tackling this. Okay. So here, this is a tuple unpacking approach. 
as same as here so basically this value will be assigned to this one and this value will be assigned to this one okay and now we are exploring all four directions that is up down left right so for this to help you out we will just write a index here 0 0 okay so for this 0 0 if you have to explore the right side we have to increment the x axis right so that's how we get 1 comma 0 that means that we have to do plus 1 to the x axis coordinate for going up we have to increment the y axis coordinate that means that it is 0 plus 1 so here this is 0 right we have to do plus 1 to get the 0 1 coordinate and here for going down it is 0 minus 1 that means that we have to decrement our y coordinate so here for going left that means that we have to decrement our left coordinate which is minus 1 so basically we're doing the same thing here so r plus 1 comma c means like we're going to the below row or like we're going down so here r plus is more like increasing the index of the row right so if you are at zeroth row then if you do r plus 1 you'll go to the below row so we're going down so we're going down the same column that is moving down okay and then r minus 1 comma c is what like going up okay this because we're subtracting from here then we'll go to the upper row okay and then here we're doing rc plus 1 so within the same row we're moving to the right column so this is moving right next is r comma c minus 1 so within the same row we're moving backwards that is moving the leftwards okay so our goal is to like if we found the word in any of these directions then we have to return to that's why we kept the r conditions over it so found is equals to r of all these conditions okay and in step 5 we're doing a backtrack and unmark the cell so this is basically required when like we couldn't find the word in one path we have then we have to backtrack and keep the particular cell to the original form so we distorted it right so basically we kept the hashtag over that so that's why we just need to replace the hashtag with this original form so the original form was stored in temp right so word of rc contains the original character which was stored in temp okay now we are assigning the same to the board of rc okay at the end we just written the font font is what the boolean value okay so here in the for loop we're just calling this dfs helper function so here we're passing row column and zero so here uh, you know row and column right this particular row and column which we are iterating now and then this zero is the index which we are starting and then in each iteration here we passing the index plus one that means that once this index is checked here we are going to the next index of the word okay if this tfs returns true then we should return true right so that's why we return true so after all the situations done and then we couldn't find the word we return false this is for the cases where we couldn't find the word okay so order complexity is time complexity is o of m into n into 4 power l where m and n are words dimensions and l is the length of the word in the worst case we explore all parts of length l from every cell so if you see here m is equals to board dot length which means that m is equals to number of rows n is equals to board of i dot length which means n is equals to number of columns we have so here it is m into n into 4 power l because here we are iterating m times and here we are iterating n times so here we are exploring four possible directions and each direction how many times we explore it's like till the length of the word right so it's 4 into 4 into 4 till length of the word so that's why it is m into n into 4 to the power of l okay and the space complex is o of l for the recursion stack since we can go as deep as the word's length so basically it's a recursion right so for recursion the stack would be of the length l so that's why it's o of l okay so i got the code right here let me try running this so it's accept solution for the three cases let me try stopping this so cool it's accept solution for all the test cases and beats the 90 percent of the users almost and that's a wrap on solving the word search problem using DFS and backtracking. This problem is an excellent test of your problem solving and logical thinking skills. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. Also do follow on Instagram for latest updates. See you on the next one.